Hello everyone and welcome for another video of Love and War Games. In this video, I'm very excited because we are going to check every single starter available to conquest the last arguments of kings, even though you can also use it for conquest first blood, but it's a bit overkill in this case. And there are new starters that have been announced for 2024 for the fifth anniversary of Conquest. I know all the hype right now is for the Sorcerer Kings, the new faction for the game. And we'll talk about them because there is a starter uh, that has been announced for them as well. But really, what is really crazy for me is that there is a new starters that have been announced for every single faction. And those starters are amazing. We'll talk about the discounts and is it good saving and stuff. But before Conquest had fine starters because it was a little discount, it was good units. But it was not like, oh my god, such a deal, uh, let's buy it twice. It's now almost as good as some dystopian war starters, and you know those are really good as well, because it's great discounts and it's units you like. Well, spoilers, now uh, Conquest has as good starters. So we'll take a look at every faction. Uh, first, a quick summary of who they are uh, in the fluff and in the lore and um, design-wise, but very short because I want to keep this video short. Then how they play a little bit and the sub-faction. Then we will see the new starters. Is it good? Which sub-faction is it more dedicated to? Is it good to start the army? Yes or no? Uh, is it good to buy it twice? And then so many times it's no, but sometimes it's a big yes. And we'll also see the old starters that are still uh, available uh, left and right. Like there is a big stocks everywhere of those starters. I think they will still have stocks for at least half of the year 2024, maybe even more. Because we still see uh, sometimes popping up the first uh, starter set for two players. So there is a big chance you can still find the old starters around, even if you see this video in a little bit. And we'll see if this old starter is good with the new starter. Is it a good combo? Was it even better as good? So it really will cover everything. How to start the game uh, or second army if you already have one with those starters. So let's go in there. We'll try to do it quite fast. It's going to be a more generalist approach. We'll try to go really to the heart of the issue. But of course, if you have any questions, feel free to let us know in the comment. Uh, yeah, I'm interested by this. Is it a good combo with that unit that I like, etc. And we will take the time to answer to each and every question as always. So the first faction we are covering are the Hundred Kingdoms. Those, I know some people call them vanilla because they don't have uh, brutes or monster, as you can see from the bullet points there, supposed to be. And uh, I would disagree that they are not interesting. And for, for me, they're really cool for a few reasons. I will not go too much in the fluff, but they're basically refugees from the big old empire that collapsed. And they're really like refugees. Like they took their bags, they settled, and they made the Hundred Kingdoms. And they're basically now the Holy Roman Empire in terms of uh, artistic directions. Uh, they don't have gunpowder, big difference with, for example, the Empire of Warhammer. And they can only count on each other, their face, the heavy cavalries, and also the Order, which are knights that are basically space marines, or knights of the Grail, if you want to keep going with the old world references. And that's all they have. And they are uh, basic humans, but they are all well trained, let's say, quite well trained. They all have uh, heavy armor, even the militia have leather armor, which is not something you see often in fantasy. Usually only the knights have armor here. Even the men-at-arms are well-armored, which is something that is, I know is important for a few players and it's good to see that Conquest uh, did put good equipment on everyone. About the playstyle, they are quite generic. In the sense, they can do a little bit of everything. They're not specialized, like they are not a shooty army. They're not a like, super fast aggression army. They can do a bit of everything, depending, first of all, on the sub-faction, on the warlords, and they can really like diversify. Uh, so they don't have a very specific uh, playstyle. They're a bit of more of a jack of all trades, which means they're not super good at one thing specifically either, but they're not bad at anything. Uh, they do, however, have very specialized unit. They have a high impact cavalry. They are very cheap uh, militia that will not do much. Uh, all their units have a specific role and they do it very efficiently, but that's it. They don't have a super crazy unit that does everything. Uh, even their very expensive units, they have a specific role, which is, for example, to hunt enemy monsters or this kind of thing. Uh, you can really play them however you want. You can have tons, and I mean tons, of militias, for example, led by some priests, like really like a, uh, people are rousing up to take the arms and defend their country or to make a crusade, whatever. And then you can really have a ton. Like we have a player here, Gorg Factory. He makes videos in French uh, about conquest. I would check him out if you speak French. And he has like, I think like 200 militias at this point. Like he just floats the table and that's a play style. But you can also make all order. So these crazy uh, cavaliers, or you can make a full legions uh, with a very extremely elite um, pikemen, like those that you see here on the picture, which are the Galliard Legion. So really, you can make anything you want. 
they're the best like uh, personal guys to customize because you can really uh, give them a very custom fluff and really personalize them however you want. 200 kingdom armies will not look the same usually, whether in colors or composition, and they're just really fun. Uh, you can play, as you can see in the sub-factions, you can play the nobles with a lot of like uh, household guards and they're all knights, uh, very much like Britonia like if I keep making a comparison like this. You can have the orders, which are like super paladins with, with superpower. They're very big. They have quite a few orders, and you can make a full army of these supernatural warriors. The legions are at the time where the hundred kingdoms were an empire that they rebuilt an empire. They had legions. Uh, the empire is gone, but there are still a couple legions there, and you can really fo focus on this uh, to kind of like those super elite mercenaries. They have different missions, and they keep trying to carry on the legacy of the empire. Quite cool. And then, of course, you can make the <laughs> horde of militias and devouts and fanaticals with the Ecclesiarchy. They have some very cool spells and stuff. And all of those playstyles, you can either focus or you can mix them, match them all together. So, what is the new starters for the Undead Kingdoms? You're asking me? Well, this is the new starter. <laughs> we'll start right off of the bat with what I think is one of the best starter because it's such a great discount. And it's well, also it's units that I love. Uh, among the sub faction, this is clearly focused on the orders, so these crazy uh, paladins with superpowers. Uh, it, all the new starters, I uh, didn't uh, specify this, but all the new starters you can see that the price up there are 160 euros, all of those. So 10 euros more than the previous starters, yes, but you get so much more that the discount in percentage that I've shown here uh, goes uh, way higher. For example, as you can see, the horsemen, like the order, are quite expensive. And if you consider everything that you will have, it's 280 euros. So it means that just by buying this starter, with all these units that are very good, all of them, you save 43% about. And that's crazy. Remember that uh, if you use, for example, our code, which is LOVE10 on the Parabellum eShop, uh, first of all, at this price, the starter, you will have free delivery. And uh, you will also have another 10%. So it means instead of paying 160, you're going to pay around 144 euros for uh, all these guys. It's crazy. Let's remember that if you don't count any discounts, the order of the Ash and Dawn, which you get three of those here, just those three miniatures is about 70 euros. So you can see that <laughs> why it's, it's really, really a crazy deal to have those guys. So now that I've said uh, how good a discount it is for every faction, I will not repeat it every time. Uh, let's have a look more in details. What do you get in the box? First of all, you have a Priory Commander, which is the only Order Commander, the character, that uh, is accessible right now for the Order and for the Ardenum Kingdoms as well. Uh, so this Priory Commander is, as you can imagine, a crazy beast in combat. It's part of the Crimson Tower, so it means that the Order of the Crimson Tower become mainstay. For those that don't know how it works in Conquest for the list building, uh, you have uh, in your army, you have different warbands and each warband you need to have one character always and you can have up to two main uh, four units in total and among those four units you need to have every time you want what is called a special unit, a specialist unit, you need to have a mainstay unit and the uh, Priory Commander of the Crimson Tower has the Order of the Crimson Tower Paladins as a mainstay which means that this composition that you see all the way there in the picture is perfectly legal. You buy the pre, uh, Priory Commander and you can play all these units however you want and it's legal, which is already a good thing. And so you have this Priory Commander, you have two uh, squadrons, like two units of Order of the Crimson Tower. I will not go too much in detail into what, who does what, but they are the default order, they're like their middle range, like they are good frontal uh, attack units, they are very good at impact especially, and they are cheap-ish for order forces so you get six of those you can either make a huge unit but then uh, you don't have enough mainstay so it's getting a little bit difficult i wouldn't recommend if you play them just as is to make them a single unit it's not how it works but you can play them in two units of three and put your priory commander somewhere in there uh, so it looks cool and then you can have your three orders of the ash and dawn which are those like if you see my uh, mouse uh, those are the ash and down those were the uh, order of the crimson tower and so the ash and down are crazy they are the equivalent of monster in other armies those guys are super expensive but they are so tough so fast so lethal they are amazing but they're extremely expensive as well um, i'm pretty sure they are the most expensive unit available to the or uh, to the hundred kingdoms as a whole 
and but they are so worth it like they if just bringing three of those make your list quite quite punchy and we'll talk about later if you buy this starter twice it makes your list <laughs> downright naughty <laughs> if you get six uh, order of the action done on the table at 2000 points you also have three order of the sealed temple which are the newest miniatures like i think they are barely getting released right now as we speak and they're already in the starter so great deal if you want to have them as well uh, they are a little bit expensive in euros so th this is a perfect way to get have access to them those guys are medium first of all so it means they will be in the battlefield a little bit earlier than the others and they're also very fast and very uh, maneuverable on the battlefield because those little guys have uh, fluid formation not going details of the rules, but it means they are very easy to pilot and they can really have a huge threat range, especially if you start to pile them up and give them more horses and you make them a five stance unit or a six stance unit. They are so fast and so threatening for your opponents. And you also have, and this I will only say it once, but you have all the goodies. You have a measuring tool for the fifth anniversary of Conquest, which is probably going to look nice. Uh, if we receive uh, one of those uh, starters for the channel, uh, for sure expect uh, an unboxing of all the goodies and of course the rest of the miniatures. There are also some command cards, which is normal, like uh, no surprises there. It, you need them in, in order to play the game. You have some quick start guides. I think it's like a little rule book uh, to explain how to start the basics and maybe how to expand, like what to buy later, etc. In case you don't watch this video, for example. And uh, then you have a map of the world. This I'm quite excited to see. I don't think it will be the cloth map that we unboxed at the same time as the Ironclad Drake, if you want that video but uh, it's supposed to be looking good like they say it's affordable like we will have a look uh, what it is but we love maps of the world don't we and you also have some decals uh, probably for the specific for each faction I hope and yep yeah, decals are always nice are they not so now that we've said all of this uh, is it good uh, this starter to start the faction well I will say yes because it's a crazy deal but it's good uh, especially if you like the order themes unless you really want to focus on another theme like noble lords or i don't know the legion etc and you absolutely don't want orders which i can hear of course but except in this very specific situation i would say this uh, starter set is amazing like it's about let's say a thousand points uh, so it's an extremely good anchor like if you play 100 kingdoms usually it means you like cavalry and this is all the cavalry need that you want, except you want to make a full cavalry list, of course. But it means that you can have this start set. It's going to be about 1,000 points. And then you can support this with whatever you want. Some nobles or legions, or you can make a horde of peasants that are accompanying these crusaders. Like, all of those can be really, really cool and fluffy. Uh, the orders are not mercenaries, I will say, but they go wherever they can help. Uh, let's say and they can also act as mercenaries so it's going to be fluffy anyway to have some orders in your list and uh, they are very efficient they fulfill all the needs of heavy units and they just look great and they're going to be so fun to play so yeah always a good way to start a hundred kingdoms armies um you will probably want a something a little bit more like infantry and stuff uh but it is very good so yes 100 percent it's a great way to start the hundred kingdoms with great discounts and all of these units every single one of them you will want to play them so great amazing and they all look amazing like they look really good like, what is not to love and then the question is do you want to buy it twice is it a good idea uh this is a difficult question uh i want to say like yes you can buy it twice but only if you like the orders because if you buy it twice that's already a 2000 points army uh, i made the test you just give a little warlord trade to the uh, one of your warlord and that's it you are at uh, 1995 uh, currently like i record this video in the middle of january so if maybe there will be an update and stuff but yeah the two starter sets 2000 point armies all cavalry uh, is it fun yes is it the most competitive uh, way to play the game probably not because you only have two medium units which are your two order of the seal temple and all the rest are heavies which means that if you play this uh, game with like twice the starter uh, you will <laughs> you will have a, nothing on turn one you will slowly start to arrive turn two and three and then there will just be a wave of cavalry that will just wash away your opponents uh, so you will wash away your opponents with uh, six uh, ash and dawn and 12 crimson towers you will wash him away but will it be enough to get back the um, uh, objective fast enough so you can win with the points uh, maybe yes maybe not depends on how well you play it is absolutely a legal list 
it is absolutely a fun way to play and very thematic and very fun. I think both for you and for your opponent, seeing this wall of uh, order of paladins uh, charging at you. But you need to like the team because really, like if, if you buy twice, you're already good at 2,000 points. So depends on you. Do you like the orders? Do you like the idea of having this uh, massive wave of horses on your opponent? Then yes, buy it twice. Otherwise, uh, maybe no and focus on something else. Talking about something else. There is still the old starter of the 100 kingdoms. And the first thing that you will see, because I put it in the middle of the screen, is that the discount is way less interesting. It's only 14%, and, <clears throat> well, it's it's less good, for sure. Uh, but, 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 it, those units are really good. And it's less good in terms of discounts, but it's very good in terms of units, because you have a Mountain Noble whore, Lord, which will want to go in his pack of Household Knights, for sure, or, or in his Mounted Squires as well, it works as well. And this is already a little bit more cavalry, uh, depends if you buy just the old starter or you add it on the new starter. But this is already a very good uh, unit. You also have uh, three men at arms, like three stands of men at arms. You have 12 miniatures. Uh, those guys are really good to be either to absorb the charge so you can counter charge or just to sit on an objective in the back uh, and being a little bit very cheap defensive units. Even though for the 100 kingdoms, uh, the uh, crossbowmen are a little bit better in that role. And you also have uh, three stands of household guards or gilded legions. You can build them as both. And uh, those are really good units, both of those. Household uh, guards really want to have a noble lord on foot attached to them. So keep that into consideration. Uh, but otherwise, build them as gilded legion. They're really still a very good blender. Do know that the goodies for the old starters are a little bit different. You don't have the measuring tools, you don't have the map of the world, etc. Uh, you do still have the command cards, of course, but especially you have the two full rule books. Hopefully they are up to date, but it doesn't change that much anyway. And those are very, th like, they are thick books. L a little bit less interesting, I would say, because probably the rule books will not be up to date, but still consider that the goodies are changed. Overall, uh, is it good, this thing? Uh, first of all, uh, do note that it's a very different theme. You have no unit of the order at all in there. It's mostly like good in the theme of the noble uh, lord's armies. Uh, so you can absolutely have your thousand points of order and then take this starter, which is less than a thousand points, and then put them together and it's going to be a good combined uh, factions uh, army, like the noble lord being helped by the order. But do note that it's no longer a pure order army. So it's very, very good if you want to go this way. I would recommend it. Like it's for like gameplay wise, it combos very well together, but theme wise, it does change the theme. So keep this into consideration. Do you want some noble lords, like very much like the noble and his uh, elite crew and some mercenary, the men at arms, uh, going on the battlefield? Uh, do you like this? And also all the orders coming along? Then yes, you can buy both. Uh, otherwise, maybe just take the units that you like. For example, if you just want the legions uh, alongside the order, or just want a horde of peasants alongside your order of the new starters, then no need to buy this uh, starter, because while the units are good for the noble lord theme, the discount is not crazy enough that uh, you will be like, okay, whatever, I only want the half of it, and uh, whatever for the rest. Uh, that's not how it works with this starter. So overall, uh, the 100 Kingdoms have good starters, uh, that's for sure, especially the new one, which is absolutely crazy. They are a great faction. Uh, the one uh, little thing that I want to point out is that there are many, many ways to play uh, this faction. Hordes of uh, infantry, elite infantry, combined arms, etc. And the new starter really pushes you in one way. So don't look at the starter and think this is the way to play the 100 Kingdoms. Uh, it is the way that I prefer, but it doesn't mean it has to be yours. There are many, many ways in this faction to play the game. So don't let this starter push you into in one direction uh, if you don't want. Uh, yes, it's a great deal. Yes, absolutely. Everything is good there. But if you have an idea in your head and you want almost no cavalry, then don't take this starter. Uh, but still, 100 Kingdoms, great factions, great starters, especially the new one. Then we are going to talk about the Spires. So the Spires, they are harder to describe, I will not go too much into the uh, fluff. Uh, basically, they are not from this world, they are aliens, they came through a portal or something. Uh, they are, are sometimes considered, uh, compared to elves, because they have this like, oh, we're so much better than everyone, and we are so old, and we saw the world evolve. Uh, um, they are a little bit elves in this sense. Uh, what makes them interesting, really interesting, apart from that they are literally aliens, uh, is that they use uh, biomancy a lot. 
and they don't go on the battlefield themselves uh, almost at all and they use biomancy to create hordes of troops called drones which are very stupid they leave like some weeks and then they die uh, which and then when they die they get recycled kind of like what the tyranids would do they recycle the biomatter and they build them again but uh, yeah not a good life uh, they also build clones which is another type of units and those are more like they have more autonomy they live way longer and they can think for themselves a little bit and but they are still built for the purpose of war and finally they also go to war with what they call avatars and this is just the real elves themselves uh, projecting their consciousness into like biological war machines and then they just go and wreak havoc so that is a quite interesting uh, way to wage war for sure and this faction gameplay wise is all about trickeries they have a lot of tricks and um, it's hard to play against uh, because you don't know what they're gonna do they have so many things they can do every time all the time they have a lot of options on the table all the time but it also means they're hard to play as because you need to learn all the tricks uh, what you're gonna do and you need to think like oh Will I uh, go this path or that path? It goes from the list building to how you deploy, to uh, which order you activate your cards. Um, you really need to... Th it's the thinking man's armies. Uh, it's, for me, it's one of the two hardest armies to play. We'll see the second one later. These these guys, when you start to master them, uh, they really come into their own. Like When you start to be a good player, experienced player with Aspires, they are for sure one of the strongest armies. So they have high floor and high ceiling. Uh, the high floor it depends on which uh, sub faction you take. Uh, if you, there are some sub factions that really require combos to uh, be good, and of course it's hard to play. And then you can um, use uh, some other sub faction with just better raw statistics, and then it's easier and more forgiving. Another thing is that they are quite good at shooting. They have very good shooting options, which is something not uh, common in uh, conquest. And uh, they are usually very fast and very fragile. But, 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 and this is interesting, they have the, the best capacities of regeneration of the game, period. Again, it depends on the faction and stuff, but when we talk about combo, it's combos especially where units will arrive, die, like many of them will die, and they will do damage when they die, etc. And then they can regenerate, and those guys that were dead come back to life, and then they die again. Uh, and then they explode again and do damage, and they are, you, you understand the, how it works. So it's uh, really interesting how they play. Um, it's They can really, a little bit like the Hundred Kingdom, they have quite a few options, a little bit less, but really you can focus them uh, however you want to play them. And they have three sub-factions. Um, mostly it's the Underspires, which are focused on the hordes of drones and regenerations. And yeah, that's it. They are the poor, <laughs> poor people of the Spires and they have mostly access to drones. Uh, then you have the Directorate, which is the middle ground. And of course they focus more on drones and clones. And they are trying, the, they are crazy scientists if I, they want to take power if I sum it up. And then you have the Sovereign, which is the leader of the Spires, the guy that cut the, the, the connection to the home world and took power, and that is their leader. And uh, this is the sub faction that you want if you want to focus on all the avatars and these uh, biological warsuits. And it's also the faction you will like if uh, you like the new starter set because. Uh, as you can see, it's mostly avatars, and when I say mostly, like entirely avatars. So it's also one of the good starter sets. It's about 39% discount because all the goodies are 270, and you pay the starter 160. Great. And uh, it's yeah, it's absolutely 100% focused on the avatars and thus the sovereign sub faction, because you have the lineage highborn, which is uh, an avatar for the highborn for the lord. And uh, as you can see, like the the miniatures are really quite cool. If you can zoom in a little bit on the picture, but they're, they're crazy, like bio horror, uh, techno war suit, like amazing. Uh, I'm usually not a fan of the um, Spire's design, personally, but the avatars, all of them, I think they're so cool. And if I were to start the Spire's army, for sure, this is what I would play. So I might be a little bit biased when I tell you this uh, start is amazing. But yeah, you have six avatars, so six stands, two units. Uh, which is good because they are mainstay and they will unlock the other two units. You understood how it worked when we talked about the Hundred Kingdoms. You have three Centaur avatars, which do what they say on the tin. They are like very fast, kind of like cavalry, let's say. Uh, they are cavalry, let's say. And then you have the Incarnate Sentinels, uh, which are the strongest unit of the whole pack. They are extremely strong um, and uh, yeah, they are very expensive as well. 
and the whole pack is just very elite units. You can see that all of those are avatars, are incarnate, I think in the fluff they are a little bit different, I'm not sure anymore, but like all of them are uh, hype, like lords uh, of the elves, of the spires, uh, that go into a physical war suit and they project their consciousness and they just boost them very, very much. And of course, they're going to be very strong. Uh, what do you think? You don't think that the High Lords would project themselves into weak war suits? Would you think so? No, you're wrong. So this, these guys are the more forgiving part of the Spires to play as, uh, because they rely a little bit less on combo than the rest of the faction. They just have good stat line. Uh, you need to focus a little bit more on the uh, list building part, because the lineage Highborn especially has very good um, Warlord trait. Uh, that would allow him to take three upgrades so you can really customize all of this i would not go too much in details once again but if you are interested in this avatar way of uh, waging war uh, then for sure this is a great starter and an amazing starter for the faction uh, even if you buy later on some drones some clothes etc this was this will always be the elite core of your spires and then you can have hordes of drones to send first etc but this is a very good first way uh, then the question is, do you want to buy it twice? Well, my answer is going to be kind of the same as the order, in the sense that, yes, you can absolutely buy it twice. Uh, then you're going to have a very good, very elite army. But be careful, because by buying this, uh, this starter twice, you kind of like lock yourself in this sub-faction. If you don't like the other type of units of the uh, Spires, this is not all the avatars. There are other type of avatars that are being released still right now, or that have been announced and they will be released later. So this is not all the avatars, but if you uh, like those avatars and you're sure, like, I want a full avatar army, then yes, buy it once, buy it twice, it's amazing, it's a great deal, jump on it. But if you want some drones, then only buying it twice is enough. And talking about drones and clones, let's have a look at the old starter sets, which has no avatar at all. Uh, it's way less of a crazy discount, as you can see, uh, but it does go really good. Uh, this... Uh, in this list, you get a high clone executor, uh, which is uh, which is a good unit. I will not go again too much in detail, but it's a good uh, clone character that can go, for example, with a bound clone, or especially I think with the banger clones, or it's good or the answer. He's gonna go in clones anyway. Uh, it's, it's a really good unit. I think you can even put him in the marksman clones, which are if I put them uh, with uh, yeah, those guys are the marksman clone with the bows really uh, crazy uh, shooting unit and you can give the high clone executor an upgrade so we can join this unit you also have some bound clones that you can build as onslaught clones or some vanguard clones that you can build as vanguard clones infiltrators it would take too much time to go in details but those are good units drones uh, clones sorry are really good units uh, to, to play as always there are no wrong choices in this and there are more uh, clones that are being uh, released uh, once in a while there are some more that are being released uh, even very soon. I know they announced the Leonine Avatar for the previous starter, and I think the Desolation clones, or was it drones? I don't remember, <laughs> anyway. Uh, but about drones, you get three broods or drones, which are these big guys uh, right there. And those I heard, like I never played with or against them, or well, I played against them, but I killed them in, by shooting on them. I played with them, so you will see. Uh, but I heard that they were very good from the players and others that they were very bad. So that makes me think that you need to know how to play them, uh, to combo them well and to really uh, play to their strength. Otherwise, they are less easy to play and easy to master than, for example, the Avatars. Overall, uh, from this army, do you think, is it, like, is it good to get it if you find it? If you find it with a huge discount, like, I don't know, 100 euros instead of 150, then yes, of course. Uh, but out of, it, out of its own, do you want it? I don't know. I really don't know because you will uh, buy the new starter because it's a great new starter. And this guy, it kind of like leans into another sub-faction. So it can work, but you will probably want your lineage highborn to be a warlord, and then you cannot have your high clone executor as a, high, as a warlord. So it can work, like for sure, like you don't lock yourself so hard. But I would think about it twice because they, uh, the spires don't have so much synergies between sub-faction than the Hundred Kingdoms, for example, who can have three different warlords, for example. So be careful about it. It can work, yes, but you need to think it through and uh, spend a little bit of time in the free application and on the list builder to know what you want and is 
this combination of units what you really need because maybe you will not want clones you will want drones for example as a really mindless uh, cannon fodder for your avatars overall the spires are an army that I have a trouble to recommend because uh, you will either love them and it will be your favorite faction and you will only play this or you will not be such a fan because they are such um, a unique faction. They have a lot of character, like they have <clears throat> a very specific um, art style that you will love or hate for sure. Uh, look at painted miniatures and not only are the official ones. Uh, because really uh, they are hard to read especially unpainted like it's impossible to read the miniature and paint it almost uh, look at different color schemes and stuff because you really will need to see the army painted to see what it will look like on the table because they are very complex and unusual and weird uh, miniatures so my recommendation would be before you take decisions uh, have a look at a couple battle reports because they have some interesting play style they play a little bit like undead for example in other factions like the vampire counts or something they have a very interesting play style and they have very interesting miniatures so spend a little bit of time in the app on the list builder have a look at other people's painted miniatures and then make your decision uh, they are very cool they are very unique they are probably the most unique army in conquest like <laughs> by far uh, but if you like them go for it and remember the avatar and new starter set is also a crazy crazy deal uh, at 144 euros if you use the love 10 code like that that's a great deal uh, and now the third army to be released for the game my little guys the dragons so those guys what to say they are uh, not dwarves because they used to be dwarves uh, they were slaves uh, by the dragons and for i will skip a few steps they absorbed the god of war that they unearth um, the essence of war really and they got very angry and they got free they got very powerful magic, they killed the dragons, they killed the old dwarves that were still slaves, and now they are the Dwegons. So they are very angry. Uh, they are not Chaos Dwarves, ca ca sorry. they are not Chaos Dwarves per se, uh, but they have used a lot of fire technology and they bound uh, uh, fire demons to war machines and throw them on the enemy. Which, while I say this, makes me think they are a little bit Chaos Dwarves, but they are not. Like, they are kind of nice, they are not corrupted, they are just very angry. Uh, they just ate the god of war, so they really are very impulsive <laughs> and sanguine. <laughs> and they, you say something bad, they will uh, go to war against you. Uh, there is this fun uh, uh, fluff story in the lore that really summed them up well. A uh, few Dwegon warlords went to siege a human city. And uh, since they couldn't settle on who will cross the bridge first when they, once they had broken the walls, uh, they started to fight each other and the humans got time to run away because they, they were like, no, but I'm going to be first. So they're really very, very aggressive, uh, very proud, much more than any other dwarves in any other settings. But they are very cool. They're a little bit steampunk. They uh, have this inner magic that can awaken in themselves and then they can they get to pilot some mecha suits powered by their magic. They are amazing. Art-wise, uh, like art direction-wise, they are the best dwarves that I've ever seen. And trust me, I I have made all the dwarves ever made by on Patreon, on ACLs, or in war games. And those are by far my favorite. They are the perfect blend of good steampunk dwarves and chaos dwarves. Uh, those guys, how do they play? Uh, well, they're dwarves, so they are tough. Uh, no surprise. They are slow. Uh, no surprise there either. Uh, they are great at shooting, again, some common trait, and they have extremely powerful magic. What? What? Magic for dwarves? Well, yes, they have great uh, fire and magma magic, and earth magic, and they are one of the best uh, spellcasting faction of the game. Because when they absorb the god of war, they really have this inner uh, source of magic going out of them. They don't control it as much as other factions, making funky things, regenerating stuff. No, no, they just have explosive magic. They either ha literally make spells like fireballs, walls of fire, uh, stuff like this, or they canalize their magic and they, for example, what you see in the picture, they shoot their um, excess of magic through cannons or they use it to animate uh, war suits and me mechas. Uh, like I said, amazing factions. If you're not convinced to play them after what I just said, I don't know what to say more. Uh, one thing that I want to say is that they used to be one of the strongest factions of the game. Uh, they are still very forgiving for beginners, but they had quite a few nerfs one after the other, and now they are much more in line. After all their nerfs, they are still a good faction. They are quite forgiving because they have high defense uh, and uh, good shooting, and they are yeah they are forgiving. They are like 
it will you will have about 50 percent win right now because you will really need to play good on the objectives and not make too much mistakes uh, and your opponents will have some play against you uh, to spoil what happened before you had basically maximum uh, defense so basically two plus save if i uh, sum it up it was five minus but the equivalent so two plus save uh, and you ignored up to ap minus two so basically we're unkillable uh, that's it. Uh, if you look at our first uh, last arguments of King Battle Report, you will see how tough uh, all Dwegoms uh, are. And, uh, spoilers, they were very tough. There are three sub-factions for those. Uh, first of all, the Ardent, which are, uh, if I sum up, they are the guys that are very much still worshipping the God of War. And they do some, like they're priests, let's say, of the God of War. Uh, they're all about having berserkers, uh, being very offensive, very fast, and having a lot of attack, if I sum it up. So more aggressive oriented units, even though they have the initiates, which are the uh, most defensive unit of um, the Dwegoms in the sense they are very good to be in the center and be like a Roman turtle formation. So this, those are the Ardent. Then you have the clans, which are the normal dwarves, let's say. So the normal uh, hold warriors, the guy that shoots with ballistas, uh, the elite warriors, the dragon slayers. Those are the normal uh, warriors, let's say. And then you have the tempered, which are all the guys that have uh, spells. Uh, so the sorcerers and the guys that uh, those guys that shoot their magic through the cannons, and the guys that use magic to pile their war suits, etc. The magma forge, the stone forge, all those guys are part of the tempered uh, sub faction. The starter is not part of any specific faction, uh, but as you can see, there is something very interesting, and we'll talk about it right now. You get an ironclad Drake, which is a very recent uh, miniature. Uh, we've unboxed it uh, quite recently and talked about how to play it in detail so have a look at the video if you take the starter and uh, this guy costs i think 130 euros on its own or 120 but it means that you just spend a little bit more and you have all the rest for free if you wanted an ironclad drake so how good of a deal is that uh, spoiler very good deal as you can see you get 40 percent discount on everything because the rest of the regiments were a little bit cheaper but still crazy you get uh, in this starter a Bermont Rare, which is a Hold Rare, which is a war leader of the clan. Uh, but this guy can ride in the Ironclad Drake, uh, and then, <laughs> which is which is amazing. Like what else can I say? It's great. Uh, you have 24 initiates, which is this Roman total formation I've been talking about. You can see them with a big shield, and they also uh, can be built as wardens, which are the more berserker way of having some ardent units your guys with uh, twin um, axes though 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 if you uh, buy just the starter you will have to build them as initiates because it is the initiates that are mainstay units uh, for the Bermont Rare so be careful even though they are multi kits uh, if you want this starter on its own to be legal you will have to build them as initiates which is good because you want someone to hold the center. And then you have the Fireforge, which were these guys with the magma cannon on the shoulder. They're basically dwarves in exosuits with magma cannons powered by magic on their shoulders. Do I need to say more uh, to convince you? Yes, well, they're a very good unit. They are expensive, but they are very, very tough for shooting unit. And if your, en your enemies get in range, they have some of the strongest shooting in the game uh, with AP-2, which is extremely rare in the game. Uh, if later on you will buy a tempered sorcerer, and you will because it's amazing and it looks great, uh, they will combo extremely good as well with a tempered sorcerer, and you will want some fire for it at some point. So might as well have them now. So is it good to start the faction? Uh, I would say yes, yes for sure, because the, first of all the deal is amazing, 41% discount. Uh, you will pay 144 uh, with, without counting the goodies, something that would cost 275. Amazing. And uh, also, uh, all the units are good. Uh, six tens of initiates will always be a good anchor for your uh, Ray, or later on, if you have an Ardent Caraway, which is the Ardent leader, you will also really enjoy having a six tens of initiates. Uh, have a look at our latest battle report that, oh, it's not been released yet, but we see six tens of initiates, and you can really give them a crazy turtle formation. You will see when it's released. Uh, if you're not uh, subscribed yet, uh, have a click on subscribe and you will see the battle report. Or if you see the video later, have a look at this uh, new battle report that will be released in February. Uh, it's really, really looking cool uh, like this. So always good to have initiates. And uh, yeah, the Fire Force, as we've said, they are one of the temple of the Dwegoms, having three 
stands of fire forge is great six starts to be a bit much but three it's the minimum you will always want that so amazing deal yes but uh, is it good to buy twice and this is where we'll say uh, not really not really you will not want 12 <laughs> stands of initiates yes you can build them as wardens and that's probably what you will do if you buy the second time but um yeah that starts to be a lot um, what I would like maybe is nine stands of war, uh, initiates and three stands of wardens. That would be my recommendation because wardens you don't want too much of them. Um, having another three stands of fire forge starts to be too much, and two ironclad drakes that just being naughty. Like if you really want it, yes you can. But then it really starts to be more like a skew list with a lot of drakes. Uh, they are great units, the drakes, especially the ironclad one. Well, both of them are really good. Um, but it starts to be a lot of points for an army that is quite weird in its composition because you will have a ton of initiates and maybe some wardens and you will need some other things on the side to have a legal army um, because you will probably not want so many initiates. So I would not recommend to buy this starter twice unless you know what you're doing really much. Maybe it's your second army and you know in your heart that you want two ironclad drakes. Then yes, it's okay. Otherwise, I really wouldn't and now we have a look at the other uh, Dwegom starters and um, this is the old one at 150 and it's one of, of those with the worst discount. It was 9% discount because for 150 euros you have uh, all the miniatures that would be 175 if you buy both them uh, separately. So it's not a great deal but, um, but, but, but something to consider. I know that for example currently in France uh, there is uh, one of the big resellers that resells some starters and the Luego is uh, starter is not at 150, I think it's like 110 or something like this. And then, then it's not at all the same uh, deal because uh, it's way, way more interesting. Not a great idea to rush on it, to buy it. However, however, the thing that saves it is that all the units are good uh, if you don't have the new starter. Because the whole layer is a great warlord and a great unit even if it's not your warlord. Um, actually, no, it's not a good warlord, I take, I take it back, but it's a great unit to put in a pack of whole things, and you have whole things uh, in this uh, uh, starter as well. And uh, you can see on the picture they are Dragon Slayer, they are the guys on the bottom left, but I would probably recommend to build them as whole things so you can put your whole hair inside, and there's going to be a great anvil that is quite uh, efficient as well. You also have 12 Hold Warriors, good units. I would even build them as old Ballistas because they bring even more utility, but great units. Initiates, you know that I love them. If you buy one new starter, one old starter, the Initiate, those guys you will probably want as Wardens indeed. And then Fire Forge, uh, always good. Six Fire Forge is the maximum because you might have two Sorcerers at the same time. Uh, it's exactly what you need. So it is a good starter because all the units are good. But it's not a great deal, so don't feel forced to buy this. If you start to like check everything that you want in your lists after the new starter, uh, and all of those are in the list, then yes, get them. There, it's great, amazing. Uh, otherwise, otherwise, I would be like, eh, maybe no, maybe no. Uh, do note though that um, if you like, yeah, but I already have uh, Bermont Ray that I will put on my Ironclad Drake. The thing I want to point out is. This is good, uh, the Bear Montre on the Drake is good, but also having a normal uh, Old Rare uh, in your squad of all Thane is very good as well. And if your uh, Drake Rider is a Rare, it means it's your Warlord, and uh, then it means with the Ironclad Drake that you will probably focus on making duels left and right. I'm going to spoil it. Uh, you will, the Ironclad Drake gives uh, Flurry in duels, and your command stands as well. And then you will probably also want, alongside your Drake, to have this whole ray that you see there uh, in his pack of Thanes. Just something to consider. Uh, don't think that having two rays is a bad idea. In this specific case, it is not. So, not a good deal, but can absolutely work. And so, the question overall is would I recommend the Dwegoms to a new player, and how should you start? Uh, the first question I will say yes, uh, not only because I'm a huge fan of Dwegoms and I'm extremely biased because they're the coolest army I own uh, any game system <laughs> combined, uh, but also because they're really good for beginners in the sense that they are simple uh, to play with, they are combos, but the core of the army is easy to play and uh, hard to master a little bit, but quite fine as well. 
and they have good statistics. They are very good for beginners because they are very forgiving of mistakes. Your huge pack of all things will survive even if he's hit in the side by a Tontor. He will not like it, uh, but he will survive. So they're very easy to play, and if you are discovering Conquest and you like the, the Dwegomes aesthetically, and you're hesitating, I don't know, 50-50 uh, between Dwegomes and Woodruns, for example, then we'll see later, uh, Dwegomes are really the easiest race to play in the game. Doesn't mean that they don't have tactical subtilities that uh, you will need to master if you really want to play competitive, because they are not the number one competitive faction. They've never been, actually, even though they were kind of like the ogre of the meta. They, it was not them that were winning tournaments at very high level, uh, and they got nerfed <laughs> even since. Uh, so they are good, but they were never a huge threat uh, competitively. So you will need to master them really well if you want to play very high competitive scenes. But to begin, they are very, very good. Overall, do buy them. Uh, do buy the starter if you like the drakes. I know that I like my full infantry and mechas armies, but if you like the drake, uh, and you consider buying it at some point, absolutely, the new st starter, 100%. The old starter, uh, consider all the units. If you want all of them, and there is a big chance you will like them, try to get it, especially if you can find it in discount, since I see it quite often in sale, in very big sales, uh, left and right. And having both starters is a very good start for the army, even though at some point you will want Steel Forged, because they're the coolest unit ever, and they're still very good, and you will have to buy them, uh, in addition to everything you have. And you will need a temper steel shaper as well to play the steel force little tips okay next faction we are going to see are the nords and the nords oh, I, mean, I, I love every faction in this game like they are very interesting i'm usually not at all a fan of vikings uh, except in dystopian wars where there are techno vikings uh, but um i know that there are, there's a big community that loves those guys uh, i'm not a big fan uh, i don't know why i never spoke to my soul but those guys those guys are really cool uh, they are interesting in the sense they're not just uh, like barbarian vikings that go to raid uh, the coastline. They, uh, they have a very interesting fluff story, I will not go in detail, but basically, first of all, uh, spoiler, their gods, the viking gods, like the Nordic gods, were spires that were manipulating their history. And when they get chosen by the god, they just get uh, biologically, genetically manipulated on. And they already had their Ragnarok. All their gods are dead, basically almost. And... Um, yeah, they are now living in a post-apocalyptic uh, wasteland uh, on their island, and uh, they have a lot of mythological creatures and giants and trolls and stuff roaming the land. And uh, yeah, it, it makes a very interesting faction that has a little bit of Vikings, a little bit post-apocalyptic survivors, and uh, all of this with a lot of mythology and superhuman uh, prowess. It's, it's very interesting. How do they play, though? Uh, they are the most aggressive faction in the sense that they put the highest pressure in the early game. They have a lot of light units, a lot of medium units, and they have few ways, depending on the walls and stuff, to put a lot of units on the table very early. However, they don't have as much a threat in the late game. They don't have as many great heavy units. They do have giants, and you can absolutely put a lot of giants in your lists and uh, have a lot of um, late game threats but it's um, not like it's a specific type of list uh, usually if you play regular nords uh, you will punch very hard in the beginning of the game like the first four to five turns and then since you're very glass cannon you will gain a lot of points yes you will hit a lot your enemies as well you will kill a lot of things yes but at some point you will just run out of resources because your guys will be dead so it really represents well this kind of like raiding mentality in the sense you go very hard, very fast, and then you don't have much, so you start to pull back kind of with what you gained. Uh, and it's very, very fun to play. It makes for very intense and very cinematic games um, because some factions are all about the late game. And especially in tournaments, when you don't sometimes have time to play all the rounds, it can be a little bit problematic. Uh, those guys are very well adapted if you have a new tournament scenes because uh, when you only have time to play six or seven turns because of the clock and uh, uh, your tournament organizers don't have uh, specifically timed everything so you have time to play at all the games all the turns uh, then nords are very much advantaged because uh, when you will start to lose steam is when the game will end so whatever you won <laughs> uh, apart from the very specific type of uh, gaming environment uh, they do a bit of finesse to play because again they are glass cannons so yes they hit very hard they can hit very hard even when they're wounded but if you get one shot by your enemy uh, then you lost a very expensive resource for nothing so be careful how to play them uh, 
there are three different sub factions. Uh, we'll start with the Mortals, which is the actually the faction that speaks the most to me. Uh, lots of Viking Raiders, the basic ones, but also those with very high armor, uh, the Huskals that you see in the picture right there. And uh, those uh, guys, that, I like them, they, they just look extremely cool, all those miniatures. Uh, they have some archers, some like, basic Viking guys, let's say. Some of them with very high armor, and uh, yeah, that's it. You also have Hulkblots, and those are all the monsters that you will have. The trolls, the ogres, the uh, wolf pack, the werewolves, sorry, werewolves, and all those kind of like mythological creatures. Quite cool, we'll see a few, uh, like how they look like in the starters, spoiler alert. And uh, they look cool, they have a very interesting play style, and uh, we'll talk about them more when we talk about the starters. And finally, you have the Exalted, which I quite like as well, I have to admit, which are those that are the descendants of the Harniars, which are the kind of like superheroes of the Vikings, uh, the Norse, sorry. And uh, they have been genetically manipulated and they have kind of like superpowers and they're really extremely strong, kind of like the order of the uh, 100 Kingdoms in a way, except they don't have horses, they're just very strong from the base. And so you have extremely strong infantry, extremely strong archers with the bow chosen, the steel chosen. And we'll see how they look like. Uh, actually, no, we'll not see what they look like because they're not in the starters. But those guys are really, really powerful. Uh, I have to say the Horde of the Orden Kingdoms also have uh, superhuman infantry, uh, but we just didn't see them yet. Without further ado, let's have a look what there is in the starter. And as you can see, it's very much uh, pointed towards the half blood part of the Nords uh, with the new starter because uh, you have right there the uh, Vargar Lord, I, uh, I'm probably butchering the name, which is this kind of like very cool miniature of uh, like kind of like a noble lord of the Nords, but also half a werewolf, it looks amazing. He has a broken, huge broken sword, very thin, like I love the theme of this guy. Uh, you also get three of the werewolves, uh, which are those werewolves, very cool, very new sculptures, looks amazing. And of course your Vargar Lord will go in this pack, very good combo. You got in this pack also those three Fen Fenrir, Fen Fenrir, Beast Pack Wargs, which are kind of like your light cavalry, let's say. Uh, they go very fast and they will uh, kind of like be your first wave to kind of like threaten your enemy archers and stuff. Goes in the theme as well. They're kind of like wolves as well, just not werewolves. You have three ogres in this starter set as well, which will you, uh, I think they are not mainstay, for the Vargia, but you can still play them. And those guys have a good regeneration, if I'm not mistaken. And they are more like your standard infantry in terms of playstyle. Like they go in the middle, they take objectives, and they don't die easily. And finally, finally, you have the Mountain Jotnar, which is this little guy. That's not so little. And this guy is the smallest of the giants. It's still a very much a powerhouse. It is the plastic kit. Uh, there is a very cool resin kit, but it costs the, <laughs> twice the price. And uh, talking about price, this uh, whole set is 265 euros if you were to buy those things separately without even including the goodies. So it means you have uh, about 37, almost 38% of discount just from this. And again, you can have another 10% with the discount code LOVE10, which means that this is really, really a good deal. Uh, again, all the new starters are good deals. Oh, there is one of them that is not so interesting, we'll see. But basically, if you want all those units, very good deal. And even if there is one of the units that you were not sure about, it's still a good deal because you get uh, a unit almost two uh, for free. Uh, almost three, actually. Uh, so it's extremely interesting. And uh, if you like the Half-Blood uh, part of the Nords, it is very good. And to be honest, to be honest, even if you plan to make a mostly mortal or mostly exalted army, uh, this is a very good complement. It's going to be a very good punching unit. Your Vargar plus uh, werewolves are going to be very fast, very offensive, same as the Fenrir. And the Mountain Jotnar, basically all the Nords list want a Mountain Jotnar at some point in their life. Uh, because it's a very good, cheap and um, run-of-the-mill giant that is still very, very efficient. And I think it's the only giant that benefits from their special rule where he hits harder when he gets wounded. So, um, yeah, a very good starter set like uh, no matter the list of course if you want to play full half lots 100 percent buy it twice uh, if you like this uh, theme uh, and only buy it twice if you like this theme of like all the monster the ogres if there are some trolls you can add as well like all these things yes it's a good fit um but 
if you are um, willing to have a pure human or purely exalted, then no. But if you don't mind mixing and having a little part of this monster army alongside your, uh, your normal mortals, for example, first of all, it's thematic. It's in the fluff of the Nords that they have these mixed uh, armies. And uh, second of all, uh, like it will look great on the table. So overall, very good starter. The old starter is not as good uh, because you only get 16% discounts, as you can see. Uh, but 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 the thing that it has going for it is that it combos very well with the new starter. Uh, you get a blooded, which is this guy, which uh, is a beast in combat. It's a very great uh, dueling guy. You have three more Fenrir beast pack wargs, three more Urgers. So it means you can re uh, probably the beast pack you want them to be uh, to have two units on the flanks. Uh, but the Urgers, it means you can make one big unit of six. Very good. And the thing you get on top of that is that you get three trolls, which gives a little bit more the theme of the monsters. However, the trolls are not just big creatures. They are kind of like humans. So yeah, you do get, I said three trolls, but I was very, very mistaken. As you can see, they are tall humans, but they are humans. So <laughs> I just corrected this whole thing. And uh, yeah, you have 12 trolls and they are exactly the middle point between the monsters and the human infantry. Very good. It kind of like solidifies the theme together if you want to have human infantry. And talking about human infantry, you have 12 stalkers, which uh, I've heard are quite good of, uh, for the Nords. I did play against the Nords a couple of times, but I never seen any stalkers. Doesn't mean that they are bad, because from what my opponents were saying, they are good light units uh, for the Nords that are quite threatening and kind of like forces your opponent to charge you which is what you want to do, like you want to be in melee if you play Norse. So a very good complement to the normal starters. Um, the, both of them go extremely well together. They complement themselves extremely well. Probably one of the best combo that you can have uh, starter-wise uh, of the entire game. Uh, I really like, I'm, I'm not sure it's the most efficient if you want to be pure competitive, but the theme goes great together and it helps you to diversify later on. And it's if you want to play pure monsters, it's still very good. So great combo uh, both stars are really good the old starters maybe you will find it at cheaper than 150 and the cheaper you will get the more the discount price that you get there is going to get higher and uh, yeah very good way to start the Nords uh, you don't get any Valkyries you don't get, get all the exalted like the bow chosen the steel chosen or the humans the basic humans the Huskars the Raiders the beer Zerkers all these very cool units you don't have and if you want to play mostly those, then yes, it's good to not take the old starters, for example. But if all the units you see are very cool for you, uh, then it's very, very good idea to take both starters. Even though it's maybe even better to take, if you want to play a monster match, it's maybe even better to take twice the new starter because the discount is higher. Overall, do I uh, recommend the Nords? Uh, I if you ask me some months ago, like six months ago, I would say maybe not, maybe not, because they used to be a kind of like underpowered army. Uh, they were a little bit weaker than others, I have to say. Uh, not by much, but still, being a glass cannon army, hard to play and a little bit underpowered, meant that when I faced them, for example, with my Dwegoms, which is actually what you see on the artwork right here, uh, Nords versus Dwegoms, uh, it didn't go good for the Nords at all. They kind of like bounced back off the Dwegoms, and then they just died very fast. However, now now they've been boosted again. Dwegoms have been nerfed, and they are now a very good army. They got really like the largest amount of buffs from the latest update, and they are now really really interesting. And they play even more in the theme of like being kind of like savage raiders going through the forest, uh, emerging, being very fat. They're really cool, very fun to play now, and they are more forgiving because of that. They are less glass cannony, and they are better suited for beginners. Especially, especially, I have to say, these monster mash armies that, especially there with the new starter, but also with the old starter a bit, uh, are the most uh, easy to play. Maybe full exalted will be even easier, but they are not the glass cannon. The glass cannon is easy. If you play all the raiders and these very weak units uh, that go very fast, the berserkers also are glass cannon. So even if you're a beginner, don't be afraid that I said many times that they are glass cannons, because these starters are quite tough on their own, especially mountain. Uh, Jotnars, the Ugurs, they're very tough. The Trolls as well have great regeneration. So, if you want the Nords, don't be afraid. Uh, get the new starter, uh, make a game or two at lower points, and see if you like it. And then we go with an army that you've seen quite often on the channel. Uh, you've seen many times Yassant uh, plays beautifully painted Wadruns. It's 
basically orcs, uh, but they are a few things that make them unique. Uh, they, first of all, ha what to start with, they have a matriarchy, which is interesting. The women are in power, yay. Uh, they also very much like have this tribal nature where uh, they're, they're actually the good guys of their setting. They just want to be in peace and just have enough food for themselves. They're very, very much the good guys. Uh, they're very much based around cults uh, of the four main gods, conquest, death, all these guys. And uh, they are very much based at war with a system of songs, of like singing tokens. Uh, where they can really make huge combos depending on the order in which you activate uh, your uh, units. And finally, these orcs, and this is a big selling point, they have tons of dinosaurs. Small dinosaurs, hunting packs, uh, raptors, T-Rex, Triceratops, uh, Diplodocus, uh, Brachiosaurus, uh, all these things, you can have them and have orcs on them. So it looks amazing. If you didn't see it yet, have a look at uh, our battle reports. We have quite a few of them at 2,000 and 3,000 points, especially of Dwegoms versus Woodruins, where you can see what a full Jurassic Park list looks like. And yeah, they, they are amazing. However, however, and this is a big uh, disclaimer, those are the most difficult army to play. They play almost like elves in other armies in the sense, uh, yeah, it's insulting for us, but I don't know. Uh, they're like elves because their units are a little bit weaker. No, not weaker, but they are overcosted for what they do. They're very strong, but they are overcosted. And you're like, why do I pay so much? They don't do that much. Uh, and that is because they really come into their own when you use this uh, singing capacity to have some tokens and then you have some huge capacities. And when I say huge capacities, I mean huge. Uh, you can have a triple activation. So having some uh, a guy doing like a march, then charge, then punching, which is insane in this game. Uh, you can have like I don't know something like plus two to your clash capacity, so you hit from a uh, two minus to a four minus. Like this is also completely changes the unit, and yeah, they can be extremely strong uh, with this. So you really need to play with these singing tokens. Otherwise, they if you play without, which what I might recommend you to do for the first game if it's your first army because it's quite complex. Play your first couple games to learn the basic of the game without the tokens. You will be weak, but whatever, learn the basics. And uh, yeah, if you want to win the games, you will have to play with these tokens. So they really need you to play with this additional layer of complexity that are those uh, song tokens. And if you don't, yeah, they're not so good. It will take some time to master. They're more like they're quite fast. They are also m more like glass cannon in the sense that they do have more wounds, but they have low defense value. So you need to be careful. However, once you master them, they are really, really strong. Uh, probably one of the strongest army in the game uh, once you start to master them and really play your combo right Especially with the latest release like the Tontors and stuff that can really give you a powerful anchor in the center of the table You and the Tontor by the way is the largest miniature uh, ever made in plastic uh, for your information and When you start to master them They're really hard to counter because like a player that knows what to do with them will steamroll a lot of its opponents However, if you don't know how to play them, you will get steamrolled without doing much. There. What type of subfaction they have? Uh, they have the tribes, so the base, like the basic orc guys, uh, with a sword, with a shield, uh, the berserker, the warbred as well. It's kind of like giant ogres, uh, very cool looking units. So basic orcs, uh, very cool looking still, uh, but they don't have anything special, and they're like the main clan uh, guys of the tribe of the orcish tribes. Then you have the cults, and the cults are the Wadroon aspect that l really leans into uh, their um, veneration of the four main gods. So famine, uh, conquest, uh, death, and the last one is war. So you ha really have a unit for each of those gods, and you can really lean into this, become fanatic. It, it really leans into the combo aspect of the Wadroons, because when you sing, when I, what I call the singing conquest, uh, the singing uh, uh, tokens, you sing for one of the cult, which means you m put a token of conquest, you put a token of death, or of, of famine, etc., and you can combo them together. So the, the cults are very cool looking, they're basically the tribes, but stronger and more devoted, like more priest-like, and they really lean into the combo aspect of the game. Leaning a little bit less in the combo aspect of the game are the speakers, which are all the uh, Wadroons that are in the riding dinosaurs. Uh, the males are riding herb-eating uh, dinosaur like uh, herbivores, uh, while the women can get to uh, ride carnivores. 
So if you want uh, raptor riders, if you want a little uh, dinosaur hunting packs or tyrannosaurs, which are called apex predators here, if you want tontors or the amazing thunder riders, which are triceratops, uh, biceratops is actually, uh, this is the sub faction for you. And when I said they lean less in the combo aspect of the game, it is because uh, they have only one way of singing those giant dinosaurs, which is the cult of conquest. So you have this layer less, you can still combo, but you don't have this list building aspect of, oh my God, what cult do I want to follow for each war band? Do I want full famine? Do I want a little bit of famine and a little bit of death? What about war? No, no. When you have a dinosaur, they can sing now, they couldn't before, but they could be buffed. And now they all sing for conquest, which means they can be like little cruise missiles that go very fast if I sum it up. If you're really beginner, it's easier to start with the speakers, and uh, I might recommend that for new players because they are looks amazing on the table. And if you play with Rune, there is a big chance you play with Rune because you like dinosaurs. So full Jurassic Park list, yes, it works. And look at our battle report that will be released in the next couple of weeks. Uh, full Dwegum army against full Wadrune army. Uh, spoiler, it doesn't look so good for the Royals. So the new starter set, what do you get inside? And is it a good deal? The first thing that I will say is that it's the lowest discount price of all the new starters at 27% is not that good. Uh, you have a chieftain, which is a very good unit, you like your chieftains. You have 12 veterans, uh, again, very good units, uh, one of the newest units of the uh, Wadroons. Very good to hold the center, which is something they couldn't do before very well. You have 12 braves, uh, which are defensive but quite bloodthirsty unit with their shields, or blooded, which can be filthy when comboed with a matriarch and in a big uh, thick stand. So good, good to have 12 braves or 12 blood. Then you have three raptor riders. It looks amazing. They're raptor riders. Uh, they can shoot quite fine and they are very fast. And when they punch you, they punch very hard with their glass cannons. And finally, you have thunder riders, those triceratops riders, which look amazing. Uh, they are not <laughs> glass cannons, but they are a very high impact unit. If they punch you, doesn't matter if you have shield, bastion, one, they ignore all of this and they just kill you by trampling you and killing you in impact and they have good attacks as well. Uh, overall, amazing units, all of them. Uh, it's great to start the game because all of these units are units that you will want. Uh, and I 100% recommend. The discount is not great, eh? but it's for sure, like buy the, you can buy this with your eyes closed, all the units you will want to play them at some point or another. I would even recommend buying it twice uh, for sure because it, it, all of these, it's only units that you will love having twice. Having uh, two units of Raptor Riders on the flanks, yes. Two units of Thunder Riders, either one huge pack or even better, like two small packs also in the center to punch, yes. A big block, a big block of six stands of Blooded with a Matriarch that you will buy later, amazing. Graves are good to make some, like all of them are great and Veteran as well. You absolutely can buy this twice. It's not a great discount, still good, 27%, and another at minus 10%, we'd love 10, but you can absolutely buy it twice and it will be great on the table. What you can do as well is to get the old starter, uh, which is good as well. Uh, it diversifies you a little bit more. Uh, one, thing, oh, one thing I didn't tell you is that if you buy twice, maybe you don't want two chieftains because maybe you want a matriarch. First of all, you can proxy the chieftain as a matriarch, for example, if you're starting the game, or you can also proxy the second chieftain uh, as, for example, a retinue or an elite uh, guy, or for example, as an abomination, if you start to make a huge pack of six stands of blood. So don't consider the second chieftain uh, to be thrown away because you don't want a second chieftain most of the time. Uh, it's gonna be fine because you can proxy this little guy as many things. So yeah, let's go back on the old starter and the old starter uh, what do you get inside? You get a predator, which is a shooty unit, uh, that uh, shooty character that will really want to be in your pack of slingers because they can combo, they can have some special characters that boost the predator. Anyway, it goes there. Is good at shooting, is fine at fighting, but is mostly there to shoot. The slingers. Let's talk about them. They are one of the strongest shooting unit in the game that you can have currently. Uh, they shoot extremely strong. They can really flood your opponent with a lot of hits. If your opponent has high armor, it's gonna hurt them, but not that much. If your opponent does not have high defense value, the, your opponent will just melt under the amount of shooting. That will also trigger moral tests, which is quite unusual for a shooting unit. So overall, slingers, a bit expensive, but absolutely amazing. Just don't let them get charged. You can also build them as hunters. 
charge fine, but I would recommend slingers because they, it's insane. You have uh, the hunting packs, three stands, which are those uh, very fast, very threatening um, little horde of small dinosaurs, the size of like, I don't know, hunting dogs. And they're very mobile, very threatening, but they're very fragile as well, extremely glass cannons. So don't send them against big units. They just need to really go where there is no unit so they can flank because they have bonus uh, capacity if they flank the opponents. So they're really there to kind of like stay hidden, stay in the forest and stuff, and just threaten your enemy's uh, expensive archers, such as, I don't know, bow chosen or your know, open slingers, etc., etc. And finally, you have more braves. Um, which are, uh, yeah, you, you can see on the picture now, those are Braves. In the previous pictures, it was uh, Blooded. So, again, uh, combo's good with the new starter because if you get the new starter and the old starter, you can still make this huge pack of six Blooded that is so efficient right now. Or you can make a mix and match. Still uh, very good. So, does it combo well with the new starters? Uh, yes, all of these units are good. The only one that is a little bit trickier to use are the hunting packs because if you charge them down the center, they will die without doing anything. But just after a couple of games, you will learn that they are really meant to be on the flank, like really like a hidden flanking unit. And uh, once you know that, all the units are good. A Predator in a pack of Slingers is amazing. More Raptor Riders, great. And uh, you could uh, like, and as you can see, it used to be one of the better uh, starter sets in terms of discount, 23%, not that far from the new starter. So overall, you can really mix and match as you want. Uh, two of the new starters, a new starter and an old starter, and you can even go for two of the old starters. You can really mix and match as you want there. There are no bad starters for the Wadroon, even though keep in if you want to buy like I don't know two of the new starters and one of the old starters, because yes, it combos well together. Remember that maybe you will want some points at your 2,000 points list to bring a Tyrannosaur, uh, like an Apex Predator, or you know, to bring a Tontor, the Brachiosaurus. So be careful, don't spend too much on those starters because the uh, Wadrun do have some very cool, very efficient unit like the Chosen of Conquest, all these guys on the side, outside of the starters. Overall, uh, is it good for beginners to play uh, the Wadruns? I would say yes, like they now they they did get some buffs as well, so they are a little bit more resilient than they used to be, a little bit stronger as well. And their natural predator, which was the Dwegons, have been nerfed. And uh, yeah, if you start uh, with runes, again, uh, make a few games without this uh, token system to just learn the basics of the game, and then you will add it little by little. Uh, the uh, starter sets are not the easiest to play. Like, you do have a lot of glass cannon units, such as the Raptor Riders that you get everywhere, the hunting pack for the old starters. Like, you do have some glass cannon units, so you will maybe lose your first couple games, depending on play against and but once you will start to master uh, all those units that you get in the starters can be extremely extremely efficient once you learn how to play with them so overall good starters don't feel obligated to buy it twice but having one of those starters uh, whichever the old or the new is always going to be a very good start or a very good boost for your Wadroon armies and if you're a new player and you want like orcs on dinosaurs for sure jump on it Take the new starters maybe so you have triceratops raptor riders and then just had like an apex predator and a matriarch or tontor and that's gonna be a very very cool list indeed now we go to the realm of undeath with the old dominion uh, which is another very very cool looking uh, faction like if i could i would play many factions in uh, conquest but the miniatures are big and they take you need a lot of them so it takes a lot of place and i have a small parisian apartment so i cannot <laughs> have too much but the old dominions i love them very much as well their, their theme first of all they're very important in the lore basically it's the old human empire uh, that used to be very big and it's really much at the core of the lore like all the other factions such as i don't know the hundred kingdoms or the city states or the new coming sorcerer kings all are descendants of the old dominion so they're very important uh, and they're still very strong now. Basically, it's an old human empire. Their god, uh, they rebelled against their god, which was getting crazy. Uh, bad stuff happened uh, and the sorcerer kings killed the god. But he, the, their god, Azalea, uh, fused with the essence of death and become, became a god of undeath. And now the old dominion uh, still have their old legions. Uh, so kind of like Roman Empire or Lots of the time, uh, Eastern Roman Empire with this Byzantine art style, 
and they are now Roman Empire legions, but undead. Very cool, and they have these old, like, fallen divinities and those bone columns. They they have a crazy art style. You will see a little bit in the pictures. But their art style is amazing. This army looks so good on the table. Like, they don't have a single unit that is not crazy cool in terms of art direction. And also the miniatures themselves in terms of the sculptures look great. So how do they play? They are undead. Uh, they don't play that much into regeneration. They do have some very good regeneration combo with some of their characters. But unlike many undead, like the vampire cores or this kind of thing, they don't play that much into regeneration, unlike the spires, for example. But what they have is that they are very slow, kind of like Roman Legion-like, like they go forward in formation, they're quite slow and undead. So if you can imagine, it takes a while to go anywhere. Uh, they are very, re very resilient because uh, they do not take any resolve damage, uh, which is huge. It basically halves the damage they take in uh, melee combat. Make them a little bit more uh, vulnerable to shooting, because shooting usually doesn't trigger any morale anyway. So mechanically, they're a bit more vulnerable to shooty armies. But it means that when they get into a grinding melee combat, it takes forever to get rid of those guys. If you can trigger their regeneration, which can happen uh, on top of that, Really, you, there is no getting out of a huge melee with a big block of healing Praetorian guards. Like, <laughs> good luck getting out of that. Those are typically the unit, like they are the opposite of the Nords, in the sense they have a weak early game and a crazy late game. Why? Because they have what is called uh, obs dark powers, or obscure powers, like actually, I have the French translation in my head, I think so dark powers it must be. And uh, it means that every time one of their stands dies, uh, and they can do some spells as well to boost it, they gain more dark powers. And when they reach some threshold of a certain number of dark powers, depending on the point scales of the game, uh, they will unlock new capacities. And they really unlock new, very powerful capacities. And it means that they are quite weak, their units, in the beginning of the games, but when they start to lose quite a few units or when they do their combo to unlock the new thresholds, uh, even their basic units do unlock some very strong capacities that really give them the edge. So you will be weak in the beginning of the game. You will maybe want your first waves of legionnaires and weak unit to go forward and die. Uh, you even have, this is unique in the game, you even have capacities or spells to kill your own stands. <laughs> yes, uh, to trigger more dark powers. And then when you reach like level 2 or level 3, I think you can even reach level 4 with some warlords on some certain turns. You will be invincible basically the late game like the, the whole point of playing against old dominion is how many points you can win uh, before you get steamrolled by their super strong units uh, it's not impossible to kill the old dominion you i've seen old dominion being, being tabled by very good opponents but usually it doesn't happen and usually what happens is you kill them well in the beginning you're like oh it's going well and then they just trigger their super capacities and you're like what do you have as boost <laughs> and then you die uh, so it's very fun, very thematic, very cinematic games. And yeah, Nords versus Old Dominion is <laughs> very, very cool and going to be very interesting games. Overall, which uh, factions, uh, sub-factions do they have? They have the Final Creed, which is all their priests and their very, uh, like, their cultists, their uh, kind of like ghost witches and their bone golems. Uh, very cool units. Uh, in terms of appearance, they look amazing. It's basically the Cult of Undeath and all the creatures that they can raise looks amazing. They have these giant minotaurs, but undead in heavy armor. Like, the miniatures is crazy. Then you have the Fallen Pantheon, which is a very specific way to play the army. It really changes the philosophy of the game because you will have one unit, which is called the Fallen Divinity, crazy miniatures, um, and you like looks amazing. And it will change how you gain dark powers because all your dark powers will boost your Fallen Divinity and she will get stronger and stronger and heal and heal. And if you get her to level 3, your Fallen Divinity is the strongest unit of the game, bar none. She will just one-shot anything she touches and she will be almost unkillable. So it really changes the philosophy of the game. And Fallen Pantheon is with the Fallen Divinity with all the army being there with cheap units to die and to boost the dark power. And it's a very fun way to play uh, the, uh, the game. And... Uh, it might be even overpowered at lower point level from what I've heard. Um, but if you plan on going tournaments like at 1500 points or 2000, 2000 points, 
then uh, it's a very cool way to play the old dominion and finally my favorite the legions which is basically uh well we're undead but we're still uh, roman legions uh, anyway so let's keep playing like this so you have these big packs of legionnaires of praetorian guards varangian guards those guys with two-handed axe it's amazing uh, lots of cavalry like heavy cavalry cataphracti and it basically plays as an old school roman legion just you're very resilient and you still have this system of dark powers to get stronger and stronger as the game progress so very cool looking on the table you have these huge huge uh, roman legions like big blocks and yeah plays uh, plays well and that's uh, that's what the old dominion that i've played against uh, usually plays and it makes for very cool games because like it's it looks so good on the table so what do you get you have in the new starter uh 24 Praetorian Guards, which are these guys that you can see, the little infantry. Uh, they can be built as Legionnaires. Basically, Legionnaires are cheaper and they are there to die and absorb the enemy charge and boost your dark powers. Praetorian Guards are the same, but tougher, more elite. And uh, they are more defensive and they can be a good bunker for your uh, characters and stuff. Okay, so you have six stands, that is a lot. And what you have as well is six stands of Bone Golems. So it's more, uh, this whole set is more for the uh, final creed uh, because you have an Archimandrite, which is this uh, priest that you can get, a very, very good character for the Old Dominion. It is good discount, 39%, very good. And if you start the faction, I would absolutely recommend to buy the star, always. 24 Praetorian Guards is great, 24 Legionnaires is great. Uh, have you, you can even buy the starter twice to have a lot of Legionnaires and Praetorian Guards, very good. And the bone golems are amazing. Having six bone golems, uh, either in one big block, but that's a lot, or two units, uh, two smaller units, uh, is always going to be a great idea. The only thing that will make me say uh, maybe don't buy this uh, starter twice is that if you buy it twice, you will have 12 bone golems. That is very strong, yes. <laughs> it would look great on the table, but it's insane. Like, it's crazy. I have played already against three bone golems. That is very difficult to get rid of six it's going to be a nightmare 12 I, I don't know <laughs> I don't know what I would do there are heavy units so it leans even more in the idea of uh, the old dominion being strong in the late game if you want to, if you love the bone golems and I know I do uh, having twice this new starters it's gonna be amazing it's gonna be close to 2,000 points I think already um, maybe 1500 but still it's gonna be a lot of points but 12 bone golems gonna be so cool and so thematic so it's a crazy list if you buy it twice but buying it tw at least once is a brilliant idea if you have none of these units and you're just starting the old dominion because all of these units are gonna be good in your list they're gonna lean well into what you want to do and even even for the fallen pantheon uh, list it's still gonna be very fine and very th thematics but anyway amazing starter great discount buy it 100% if you're starting the old dominion and then you had the old starter, which was was a 21%, which was fine, like good uh, discounts still. And uh, it's also a very good starter. You have a Strategos, which is more like the legions uh, part of the uh, faction. Uh, very good uh, military leader. Uh, more like a support leader if you compare to the Xiliarch, which is the second uh, legion character, which is more like a duelist, uh, let's say, or blending machine, <laughs> we can call him because he's very strong. You have another 24 praetorian guards which is you know how good these are these are really the core of the faction not the praetorian guards but the legionnaires but anyway uh, both versions are very good you have you have 12 athanatoi which are these two-handed uh, sword guys which are very good uh, like fast melee blenders they're medium units or you can build them as varangian guards very expensive but they are probably one of the strongest units in the game very expensive yes but they are as good Pretty much as the dragon slayers of the dwaygoms which means they are extremely elite heavy infantry those varangian guards and they are still very very good and finally you have three cataphractoi uh, which are those uh, heavy uh, cavalry uh, almost as good as i would say like they're i would say better than the household knights of the hundred kingdoms they are almost on the same level as uh, the order knights of the hundred kingdoms very good heavy cavalry this starter is very very good as well a little bit less discounts yes but it goes so good uh with the new starter 
I would even recommend you if you're starting Old Dominion and you don't want this crazy 12 bone golems list uh, to buy the new starter and the old starter. It's a very good combo. You have so many good units. You're going to have 48 Legionnaires or Praetorian Guards. You will probably have more Legionnaires than Praetorian Guards depending on how you build, but it's such a good core for the army. You have your elite infantry as Atenatoi or Varangian Guards. You're still going to have two packs of Bone Golems as your heavy pushers at the late game. And you also have cavalry uh, in the sense of the Cataphractoid. You can still expand from there. Uh, if you see you really like Cataphractoid, you can have the character that boosts them uh, and that goes in the unit. Uh, if you like the Fallen Divinity, you can still have the Fallen Divinity and you will have things that you want, which is a lot of Legionnaires to die for you. And also the Archimandrite, very good. And some bone golems amazing like it's such a good start to have the old and the new starters if you were to buy only one of them i would recommend the new starter because the discount is better but if you know you want to play the old dominion uh, either because it's your second army or because uh, you really want to go all in with conquest in one purchase which is always reasonable because uh, it saves you a, a lot of time like you get all at once then I would recommend to get the new and the old starter and not twice the new starter. Uh, remember to have a look because maybe you can find the old Dominion old starter uh, in discount again on some website because uh, maybe they will want to sell them very fast uh, to get more space for the new starter. So keep your eyes open for this. Overall, is the old Dominion good for new players? I will say yes. I will really say yes because they are very resilient uh, by not having resolved uh, characteristics. They will have later on some human cultists that have resolved, but they, it's not going to be the heart of the army. What you have in both those starters is really good. The new starters is going to be really easy for new players because it's very tough units that are very easy to play. Even the old starter, the only glass cannons would be the Atanatoi or maybe the Varangian Guard for the price cost, for their point cost. But still, very easy unit to play, very uh, forgiving of mistakes. Even if you get charged, you should survive. So. Overall, the Old Dominion is a great faction for beginners. Uh, you get stronger uh, as you get killed, which means even if you make mistakes and you lose a whole uh, pack of, I don't know, one of your expensive units, it's okay. Your other units are stronger now. So it's, uh, as I said, very good to begin. Very good as a second army. Like, it's always very good. I love the Old Dominion very much. Like, if I if there were no Dwegums in the game, I would probably be playing Old Dominion. So I will say a lot of good things about them, but really, they look great on the table. They are quite easy to paint from what I've heard because you can really just paint them as uh, rusted uh, armor uh, with some uh, contrast paint. You can, of course, paint them as historical Roman legions. This is what the guy that I play usually Old Dominion against paint them as, and it looks brilliant. Anyway, great army, plays easily, great fluff, very important in the lore, uh, easy to play, and what more do you want from a faction? I don't know, I don't know. And uh, you can play 12 ball golems uh, e easily and cheaply now. And this, I, I want to play against 12 ball golems one time in my life because it's going to be such a crazy game. I cannot even start to imagine how it will play. Then we go to the City States, which used to be the latest faction to be released. And now there is the Sorcerer Kings. We will talk about them later. But still, they are very interesting, those City States. They are, I wouldn't call them steampunk. I think I put the name Arcane Punk. Uh, for these guys and uh, yeah they're they have kind of like mechanical magic powered uh, for example prosthetic arms or mecha suits and they're very cool looking uh, alternative steampunkish uh, with big quotation marks uh, steampunkish uh, ancient greeks and they are basically refugees from the old dominion and they uh, however unlike the hundred kingdoms they didn't just run away when everything uh, collapsed they had more time uh, to uh, prepare their exile. So it's more like the Old Dominion, how it used to be before the fall. And they're well organized. They live in city-states and uh, they have a lot still of what they are called breads, uh, which is not the baguette. It's uh, more like bread. Like they've been br creatures that have been bred to serve humanity. It used to be gifts from the spires and uh, they are like the minotaurs and the satyrs and centaurs. It's this kind of creatures that are now basically put into servitude uh, very much and uh, but it gives a lot of uh, flexibility and variety visually to the army because unlike the hundred kingdoms which are basic humans with infantry cavalry you know, those uh, those city states they have a lot of strong infantry yes but they also have uh, minotaurs they have giants like kind of like titans they have satires they have 
very they have a lot of variety in their list how do they play they are also very slow like the old dominion you don't change <laughs> who you are in the heart they're still very slow and they are also like their formations very well um, more than any uh, faction in the game their hope lights and all their units they really want to fight the enemy head-on they have a lot of bonus by facing the enemy head-on and they're almost unbreakable if they do this but if you flank them their front line will collapse fast so they do require a little bit uh, of finesse in the placement they are very defensive and their whole thing their whole playstyle is to absorb the enemy attack very well uh, on their front arc and then they make a very good devastating counter-attack they have uh, something called a strategic command stack i will not go too much in details but it means that if the enemy is in contact with you you can really make a very cool combo in disengaging and then activating right away without letting your opponent breathe another unit and then your oplites disengage and your heavy eaters go in front and for example your minotaurs with twin uh, handed hammers and then they will just uh, counter punch extremely hard so they're a little bit more of a combo faction but not as hard to play as the woodruins for example the strategic uh, stack when you begin the game you can you really use it as a joker card like oh my god i didn't see anticipate this so i'm going to use my joker strategic card to uh, counter attack and make my double activation very fast but when you start to master the game uh, i've played against a good city state player and damn like he makes such combo it's like okay i my front line is stabilized yes and then he's like you have activated my <laughs> trap cards and then he makes combo 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 and he just collapses your entire front line even when you do able so very good army, very cool, easy to master, uh, sorry, easy to play uh, because of the Joker card and hard to master because to make the most of the strategic uh, cards, uh, you really need to know your army well and to build your list well. Very cool army. Uh, we'll talk about if I recommend it for the beginners later, but yeah, do note they have very little shooting. Uh, they have some satires with shooting and stuff and there are new chariots, uh, artillery chariots that have been announced that will bring good shooting to the list, but they are really not based around that. It's more like support shooting. They, neither do they have good cavalry, indeed. They have creatures that fill this role, but they don't have great cavalry. They have their companion cavalries, which are more there as a support. Even in the list building, they prevent you from taking too many of those. Uh, they do have some cavalry, but it's really not the heart of their list. The heart of their list is amazing infantry front lines, some creatures to go on the flanks or be the counter punch, and some titans that you can bring as well, or some uh, Eidolons to be more uh, like support or kind of like being the real hammer to punch the enemy down. You have three sub-factions. Uh, they didn't give the name, so this I invent the names. Uh, you have the army, a part of the city-states, which is the basic Oplites and Agema's elites and Thorakites and those kind of units. Uh, basic humans with sometimes prosthetic, sometimes uh, very cool uh, energetic armor, but still basic humans with sword and shield, spear and shield, uh, like all these kind of things. You do have quite a lot of variety, so you can really build your army around this if you want this very kind of like almost historical, historical themed uh, ancient Greek army. It's very much possible. Then you have the mechanists, which are more the steampunk aspect, arcane punk aspect of their list. Uh, you have these titans that you can have, which uh, with very much like they're kind of like arcane titan. They're not really creatures. They have been built and infused with the soul of the, their gods, but they're built, so they're part of the mechanics subfaction. And you can have, of course, these Adolans, which are these crazy bio terror units, but still built by the mechanics. Uh, I was expecting mechas, I got absolutely not mechas, I got ghost, uh, bio, techno, horror ghosts, which I'm not a big fan, but if you like it, good for you. And also all these chariots and these war machines that can be built by the mechanics. So more on the arcane punk uh, part of the list, you can absolutely build your list like this, or you can mix and match as always. And finally, you have the breads, uh, <laughs> sorry, you have the creature, let's say, uh, part of the faction which is the Minotaurs, the Centaurs, you can put the Titans in there as well. You really have a few variations of those guys, and they are more uh, skirmishers in this sense. Uh, you can have some Minotaurs toward the front lines, you have some side that can deep strike deep into your enemies and try to assassinate, very cool. And they're usually more there in support, so to mix and match with the other faction. But if you want to make a pure, like kind of like bred creature rebellion uh, that are becoming all independents, uh, that could look amazing on the table 
and uh, very fluffy and very thematic and i would love to see that uh, and yeah, this uh, part of the army is there as well for you if you like it now that you've seen more what the city state is all about what do you get in the starter like this, this is another very good starter uh, units wise uh, the discount is 37 uh, which is good which is good uh, you get a polymark which is this uh, hero uh, it's a good hero like he boosts like how it's supposed to be you get 24 to so 6 tens of agemas which are these amazing elite infantry i love their style they are very elite like they have this sword this heavy armor with a full plate mask they have capes i love capes in the game uh, and they look amazing you can build them as thrakites which are these uh, light units uh, with which you can uh, include a minotaur to really boost uh, their offensive power i will not go too much in details of the combos but both versions of uh, those units are very good you, get, you can build uh, six tens of agemas three agemas three thrakites there is no bad answers to this and then you get also three minotaur harpists uh, then you, you can either build them indeed either as harpists with a shield, kind of defensive unit, or as the Therians, more expensive, with a two-handed hammer that really punch very hard. Uh, you can build them as a, their own unit or something you can do as well, something to consider only the city-states can do. You can put a stand of uh, Minotaur uh, Therians into each unit of Thrakites as a fourth stand. And uh, yeah, it's very cool and very thematic. Uh, be careful because then you it costs a little bit less points and you will have one stand that will do nothing if you do this and it means you build only Thrakites, which i maybe will not recommend uh, if it's the only city state that you have but yeah something to consider uh, when you will see minotaurs and these kind of units remember that you can place them inside big packs of infantry you also will have one uh, titan like a um, giant the ephaistian uh, which is this fire guy there you also can build it as a promethean which is more support variant, while the Hephaestian is more like a damage variant. Well, it looks amazing. Like you, I don't know if you realize on this picture, but uh, the giant is huge. Like it, it's really, really huge, and it will tower over over the entire front line. And uh, is it a good way to start the faction? Yes, it's a very good way to start the faction. Agamemnon are amazing. Minotaurs, you will always want them. Polymark is a good hero. You will want it, and having one Titan is great. Uh, is it uh, such uh, needed to like I know that some people don't like the Titan uh, First of all me because I cannot fit it in my home <laughs> or because they like this historical approach of like maybe having mostly infantry and maybe some minotaurs for the fun But not these giant units If you don't like the Titans Maybe don't jump on this set because this set is such a good deal because of the Titan uh, Which is very expensive on its own. I think it's almost a hundred euros on its own if you don't want the Titans don't jump on it it is a good deal, but if you don't play it, it's not worth it. If you like the Titan at least once, buy the set for sure. It's a very good deal. It's an amazing deal, and all the units are good. I think an FAS Tiani is always going to be good in your list. Do you want to buy it twice? Ah, uh, this is where I'm not so sure. Uh, if you like the Titans, and you want, for example, two FAS Tian, or you want one of each, for example, then yes, jump on it. It's a great deal. Absolutely. And having uh, 48 Agemas, which will allow you to have some Thrakites and some Agemas, yes, it's going to be great and some more minotaurs, even better. But uh, if you don't like the Titans that much, again, having one, I, most people will want maybe a Titan in their list. Having two starts to be a very oriented list. So depends on if you like the Titans or not, basically, if you want one or two starters or not. The old starters uh, is also quite good in the sense that it's 20% discount over buying them separately. So it is, it is still a fair discount, very good, especially because uh, you have only units that you like. Oh, sorry, it's there. And uh, yeah, you have 24 hoplites, which are the basic variants of uh, the infantry. They are really here, the hoplites, to hold the front line with their shield, with their defensive phalanx formation. You can build them as phalangites, uh, which are those a little bit under. If I point them with my mouse, it's going to be easier. Those guys with the shield are the hoplites. Those guys without shield are the uh, phalangites. phalangites. I would recommend building them probably as hoplites uh, beginning like having a big pack of six stands of hoplites is going to be a very good front line just make sure they don't get flanked and they can really hold the line more game as you know i love those guys either a game as either thrakites is great and more minotaurs is also really good so it's 
really good deal uh, to uh, in the sense that okay you have 20 percent which is not crazy but it's still very good especially if you had another minus 10 percent with a law of 10 code uh, but also because those all of those are units you will want they're the core of your army later on yes you can buy uh, war chariots you can buy some satires to flank yes but this is always going to be units that you will really appreciate having in your city state except if you want a very skew list like only uh, rebelling minotaurs and satires and this kind of thing yes but all, all, uh, otherwise this is really going to be a good starter set and what i would say is if you have the new starter i would recommend not buying twice the new starter but buying once the new and once the old uh, to really have a good core you will have a nine stand of agemas slash thrakites which will allow you to uh, build one, at least three stands as Thrakites and not only Agamas. You will have Hoplites or Phalangites, both work actually, uh, as your front line. You will have six stands of Minotaurs, so you will have at least uh, three uh, Minotaurs uh, that you will build as Thedeans or as um, Harpest. And the other uh, three uh, miniatures that you will have, maybe you will build them a little bit as Harpists to go in the uh, Phalangites and a little bit as Therians to go in the Thrakites. But this way you can really use the second pack of Minotaurs to boost your infantry by putting these uh, miniatures uh, in support, literally, of your uh, infantry blocks. So overall, it's a very good combo. You will have an Aristarch and a Polemarch, the both heroes that are really interesting and very good. So love them, love them. It's a great idea if you know you want the city-states and uh, nobody was going to blame you because it's an army that has so much character on the table and it l just looks amazing. And the official color scheme, it, I, I love it. And the miniatures are quite new. Uh, if you compare like the old 100 Kingdoms men at arms and stuff, they're a little bit old and it's like, eh, like I like the art style, but the miniatures are not as good quality. Uh, all the city state, they have been released basically last year and uh, yeah, they look amazing. All the miniatures look so good. Like, I've, I've fought them on the table and seen them painted and they're amazing. All the miniatures are amazing. First purchase, if you were to buy only one, would be the new starter because it's a very good uh, discount. If you don't want the Titan or you want a second starter, uh, then the old starter is a very good uh, either first purchase, either a boost for your new starter. And of course, if you see the old starter in discount at 120 or 110 euros because they're getting rid of the stocks, uh, jump on it. It's an amazing deal. Overall, is it a good army for beginners? Yes. Uh, it's not as forgiving for beginners uh, because, uh, for example, the Hoplites really don't like to get flanked. Uh, they collapse if they get flanked, basically. They lose all their defensive bonuses and they're a little bit expensive. Uh, they have some glass cannon units, such as the Minotaur, Therians, and the Satyrs. They are not here, but they, they are harder to play, let's say, than all the minion or Wagons. Uh, but you do have some uh, magic tricks, especially your st strategic uh, common stack which can really help you in, or in your first games uh, to go over the fact like you made a mistake in building your command stack. Well, you have a Joker, very good. You can really play with this. And they are defensive, which means uh, they are easier to play. You can really form your front line, uh, have your formation and let the enemy come to you instead of having to plan like, okay, I'm gonna flank there, then I need to push my units. No, you can just wait for a turn. You can even like just go on the objective or just in front of the objective, hold your line, Make sure that your opponent comes to you. You are strong enough to absorb the first impact and then you counterattack. And uh, yeah, in this sense, they're a good army for the beginners. New models, very uh, enjoyable to paint from what I've heard and uh, very fun to play. And when you will start to master them, yes, they are easy to play in the beginning, but they are also very fun to master, to play with the strategic cards and they can be really, really powerful. Uh, when you uh, play them at a uh, high uh, level, uh, like competitive level. We do see uh, quite often city-states uh, winning even world-class events uh, because they are really strong when played well. And finally, what the, all the hype is about these days, the newest faction that uh, we knew was coming, but now we see the miniatures, the Sorcerer Kings. First of all, the design is insane. I was not expecting to like them. I heard, like I saw the artworks and I was like, yeah, whatever. I was expecting a little bit of the uh, alien faction from Rise of Legends. <laughs> that does bring me back some memories. Uh, so kind of like uh, 1001 Knights uh, theme uh, armies 
with a lot of jeans and spirits and the little like uh, desert tribes and stuff so i was expecting a lot of this oh my god uh, if you know rise of legends i feel like i'm the only one who ever played this game amazing game like age of empires with steampunk um, Vinci uh, and the aliens and there were also some <laughs> alien uh, aztec kind of like goa wolves of stargate but uh, aztec version of this amazing game if you know this let me know in the comments and yeah i was really expecting basically a copy paste of the alien faction of rise of legends and i was like yeah it's gonna be interesting but will it be so cool i'm not, I'm not sure and they announced the miniatures and they are amazing yes you have jeans that look as cool as jeans could be but even their basic infantry is heavily armored which you know i like and they're not only a middle eastern faction they mix also some uh, Mesopotamian uh, ancient mythology and some Indian mythology, and it looks amazing. I love it. Uh, so I'm really excited to see the faction. And uh, I, we don't have the rules as I record this. They've been announced recently. I record middle of January. So we don't know yet how they're going to play in terms of podcasts and stuff. But they did announce a few things. First of all, they announced that they are going to be the best magic users of the game. With According to their name, I can believe them, it's supposed to be their thing. They have a unique way where you activate some very powerful spell with a card. Uh, so it's kind of like allows you to temporize a bit your activations. And also, if you need to use a card to use a spell, I can imagine it's going to be even more devastating than the old Dwegom Flame Wall when it was nerfed. Uh, if you know, uh, you know. Uh, they also are going to be quite elite from what they say, so very expensive units. Uh, especially if you lean into the gene uh, aspect of the game they did say that uh, like implied that uh, some of the gene units some of the, of the spirit elemental units will be mainstay so it will be easy ish to have a fully uh, elemental uh, army if you want but it's going to be very elite of course and how they will play if you play the basic version of the game they're going to be some they're going to have some very strong spellcasters uh, with some tough bodyguard units and uh, very powerful spells of course and a lot of elemental units uh, around will be quite uh, interesting to see how they play uh, actually uh, they're gonna have three sub factions the elemental cores they are very fancy rich uh, parts that use a lot of like all the sorcerers themselves the priests uh, not priests but like the yeah the sorcerers let's say the wizards that will have a lot of elemental creatures to their commands for now we have seen the miniatures for fire and air and later on in the years we'll see the water and the earth miniatures coming up very excited to see this especially earth and water all the ones i'm really excited about so we'll see how it looks i might start the faction when they announce if they're really too cool for me to hold on uh, so you will have also uh, the enclaves which are more there are still some uh, spell casters that have been sent by the elemental court after training to kind of like manage the enclaves they're basically the basic humans uh, still have very good uh, armor very good training very uh, elite uh, aspect of the faction um, and they're gonna have these elite humans that are here to support the spellcasters and protect them while they do their thing while the elemental courts are gonna be from what i understand more glass cannon and more damage oriented and finally we have the tribes they we don't know what type of miniature they're gonna have they are in the fluff they are the humans that are outside of the enclaves kind of like refugees and there have been conflicts between enclaves and tribes in the past until the elemental courts had to intervene we have no idea what they're gonna look like uh, but uh, they're probably gonna be more like the alien of uh, rise of legends i think so more like uh, humans with a lot of turbans and ready to walk through the deserts and this kind of uh, aesthetics i suppose uh, we also saw some teasers for uh, chinese looking factions with really like typical like uh, three kingdoms era uh, looking at uh, chinese uh, leaders in the tournament pack for example i thought it was going to be part of the sorcerer king's uh, sub factions maybe the enclaves or maybe the tribes even and actually no apparently there it's a teaser for an upcoming chinese looking faction uh, this is just my interpretation of it but uh, if it is true wow i cannot even wait for this but Probably it's just a little teaser for something that will come out in three or four years so we'll see uh, when that happens so now that we've seen the sorcerer kings how they're supposed to play and their sub faction let's have a look at the starter that has been announced they obviously they don't have an old starter so we're just going to see the new starters and what is it you're going to have a maharaja which is uh from what i got um 
the spellcasting uh, unit. So from what I get, the Maharaja is the strongest spellcaster of the Sorcerer Kings. Extremely powerful, and this guy will lead the elemental courts. There is the Raj, which is going to be like kind of like also a spellcaster, but a leader of the Enclave that you can buy in the first release as well. But the Maharaja is going to be the leader of the elemental court subfaction. So they say that it's the uh, most powerful spellcaster in the game. We'll see uh, if it is. Uh, you will also get 24 goals, I'm not sure to pronounce this, goals, goals, uh, which are these uh, elemental of fire guys that you see on the right of the picture, if I put my, yeah, mouse. Here are the guys. They're not zombies, actually, and like, uh, like you see them unpainted, but have a look, there have been some teasers of those guys painted. They are basically fire demons, because they're like still burning. They're probably gonna have aura of death or something like this, I'm pretty sure. And um, they are light units, so they are the first wave. They're here to absorb the impact. You're probably gonna want to move charge them to trigger the aura of death, which I'm pretty sure they're gonna have. And uh, yeah, they're gonna be the cheap uh, part of the... Because you cannot have a full elite faction, of course, right? So those are gonna be quite cheap and your first frontline unit. So having six tens is for sure going to be useful. Then you have 24 Rajakurs, hope I pronounced that right, which are those uh, heavily armored infantry. They're gonna be medium, so they're gonna be able to capture the objectives and they're gonna be a very good bunker for your Maharaja. And finally, uh, apart from these uh, already uh, four units that you have, you have a fifth one, which is going to be the Efreet Sword Dancers, which are these uh, jeans that you see here. And you can build them in the same kit as Efreet Flame Casters, which are going to be uh, more well, ranged damage dealers. Uh, probably they're going to combo well with the Maharaja. Maybe he's going to be able to send some spells through the Flame Casters. This is pure hypothesis. But they're going to be more glass cannon damage oriented because they are part of the domain of fire. We will learn more about the playstyle yet, but what I can tell you is that uh, this starter is 160 euros, uh, and if you were to buy all of this without even including the goodies, it would be 245 euros. So it means you get a discount of 30%, which is really good for a new faction, you have to admit. And uh, it means that if you want to start the Sorcerer Kings, I don't imagine you not buying this starter set. It's really the core of the army that you will want, and except if you really want to start right away with a very skewed list of like only the Maharaja and then only Ifrits uh, from the Plane of Fire and only those uh, guys that have been announced as well for the Plane of Air and you want to play a full elemental force which don't start, talk, don't start to buy now because we're not sure the list building restrictions, be careful. So unless you really want to do this, I don't imagine you starting the Sorcerer Kings without uh, using this starter set. So having it once it's almost obligatory, so you get 30% discount plus another 10% if you use Love 10. First of all, uh, thank you very much if you do this, and it also shows me that there is a big interest for Conquest, and I will do more and more videos of Conquest if I see that there are interest, either with a comment or even better if you use the discount code. And if you buy this uh, twice, uh, I would say it's a great way if you want to play this army fast to reach 2000 points very fast, but then it means you have 48 Rajakurs and 48 uh, goals to paint. And it can be a lot. Uh, so do consider, uh, do you want to maybe just buy now for now the starter once and then wait to see what other releases arrive. And maybe by the time you finish painting the starter set, there will be more things that you want. Especially they've announced the uh, Azuras, uh, like kind of like gods of the domains. Uh, that you will be able to have. It's kind of like the Sorcerer King's Giants monster units, and it looks like the craziest, coolest monster units. It has four arms. Uh, it looks insane. Uh, look at the announcement. Lots of YouTubers, or you can find it on the Facebook and the Discord. It looks insane. So do think before buying it twice. Yet it's a great deal, and if you want to reach fast and for very cheaply 2,000 points with the Sorcerer Kings, it's a great way. I'm pretty sure that having uh, 48 Rajara course is going to be great because you will want Toth bunkers for your characters because you will probably want from the playstyle of the army you will want a uh, few spell casters, different ones to combo very well having six tens of Ifrits is going to be great you can build one of each type uh, for sure and having 48 goals uh, they announced that they're going to be very cheap and you're probably going to want big packs of those to really trigger well the uh, aura of death that I'm pretty sure they will have and then they can really be there as a uh, speed bombs so it is going to be a good play style but do consider again that it's if you buy twice the starter you lean more into the enclave slash uh, elemental court area 
uh, and mostly the enclave i think and less on the pure gene uh, spirits uh, aspect of the army it depends if you like it or not uh, do know that the maharaja if you have it twice uh, you can i'm pretty sure everybody even in tournaments will be extremely fine if you proxy your maharaja as a raj for example or as a sorcerer for sure uh, do consider that they are some other units in pre-order for the sorcerer kings apart from the starter so you can absolutely just buy once the starter set and then uh, you buy the little units that you want the azura you can buy these uh, plane of air creatures or a couple other characters if you want would i recommend the sorcerer kings for a new player i have no idea because we don't have the uh, we don't have the rules yet but what i can tell you is that if you like the play style and if you like magic oriented unit uh, you can uh, for sure jump on it there has never been a faction that is super unplayable in conquest so we don't know yet the exact playstyle or army composition or trickeries, but if you like the concept, the theme of these kind of like Eastern armies, very organized, extremely well equipped with the support of creatures from fire, earth, uh, water and air, and those uh, divinities uh, that come from these other dimensions, these parallel dimensions to the real world to come to fight for you, and you like this theme, for sure, go for it. And of course, if you used to play uh, Alien in Rise of Legends, uh, I used to play Vinci, of course, uh, then uh, you know that you want this army, of course. That is going to be it for our review of all the starter sets. Overall, as you can see, a lot of possibilities. The old starters were fine, but not crazy good to start the game. Now they're going to get, they're getting additional uh, sales, so you can get the starters at uh, sometimes minus 30 minus 40 percent so then they get very good and on top of that you get all these new starters that are sometimes at almost 45 percent discounts from buying the things separately and for all of these things you always can get minus 10 percent more by using the law of 10 code so what is there to say except that it's never been a better time to start conquest because there's never been better deals with as good units most of the new starters have very new units uh, in the kits and they are well uh, played, uh, they are well made uh, to be uh, playable alone, to be able to buy twice or sometimes to combo well with the old starters. If you have any question, you're like, ah, oh, I would like this type of army, uh, is it a good idea? Give us a comment. It's all, first of all, it always makes us happy to answer and uh, we will really help you to try to uh, get started in the game. Uh, at the cheapest uh, point of entry because yes uh, conquest miniatures are very big and very beautiful but they can be expensive so uh, any trick that you can get to put the price a little bit lower with discount codes or with making sure you optimize the things well and don't buy things you don't need is always i think going to be welcome so feel free to ask us uh, any questions let us know how you start will start the game which starters gets you very excited about will you start the sorcerer kings and if yes uh, how will you buy the starter once twice will you go all in elemental from the beginning let us know uh, all of this in the comments first of all it will make us very happy you will gain a chance to win an entire dystopian wars battlefleet there is two of those so it can make you start a new game as well and also on top of that, this video is really meant for beginners. So the more you give us thumbs up and the more you give us comments, the more YouTube will recommend this uh, video to uh, other players, mostly beginner players. And then they will see this video. They will maybe start Conquest because it's been a bit, maybe they didn't know it or maybe it's been a scary game and now they know how to start. So the more you share this video uh, on your socials or you just put a comment so we're more visible, the more uh, new players will see it and maybe take the first step and join your community to start the game. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, let us know if you would like more Conquest uh, videos on the channel or if you are only interested in Dystopian Wars, for example. And until the next video, take care of yourself and remember to keep spreading the love all around. Bye.